With Unreal Engine 5.6, Epic Games just dropped the best way to learn Unreal Engine, the new game templates. These are not just the very bare bone example projects like before, but they are packed with real modular gameplay systems ready for you to explore. Whether you're brand new to Unreal Engine or just want to speed up your prototyping, these templates are the perfect starting point. In this video, I will break down what each template includes, walk you through how to download and use them and show you how you can use them to level up your Unreal Engine skills. And stay till the end because I will show you how to use these templates to start transitioning from Blueprint to C++. But first let's talk about which new templates you will find in Unreal Engine 5.6. The update still includes the familiar base templates you might already know. First person, third person, top down and vehicle. These serve as a foundation but now each each of them comes with specialized variants designed for specific game types. And that is where things get really exciting. Starting with first person, there are two new variants to explore. The arena shooter focuses on fast paced action and comes packed with multiple weapons, jump pads, interactive environments and very basic AI. Perfect for learning FPS design through real gameplay elements. On the other hand, the survival horror variant shifts the tone entirely, showing you how to create an eerie atmosphere with a stamina based sprint system and dynamic lighting to support environmental storytelling. For the third person projects, Unreal offers even more variety. The combat template equips your character with melee combos, health system and reactive enemy AI, which is ideal for brawler style games. If you are leaning towards movement based gameplay, the platforming variant includes double jumps, wall jumps and air dashes, all wrapped in a smooth third person system. Setup. And for a more classical approach, the side-scrolling variant delivers 2D gameplay with modern physics and camera control, great for building retro-inspired titles. The top-down example also got a major boost. The new strategy template is aimed at real-time strategy gameplay, featuring multi-unit control, building interiors and a clean orthographic camera. Meanwhile, the twin-stick shooter variant introduces fast arcade-style action with separate movement and and aiming controls, enemy waves and a built-in scoring system. Lastly, the vehicle category is now split into two distinct experiences. The time trial template is focused on checkpoint racing, lap timing and a fully functional racing hut. This style of gameplay you have probably already encountered before when you played things like Mario Kart or other racing games. In contrast, the off-road template leans into freely driving around an open world without any time constraints. Each of these variants offers a complete playable experience right out of the box. Whether you're learning, prototyping or planning a full project, they give you a specific head start so you can focus less on setup and more on creating. But now, how can you actually download these new templates and start exploring them yourself? First, open up the Unreal Engine launcher and make sure that you are running Unreal Engine version 5.6 or later. Once you're in, head over to the game Games tab when creating your new project. Here you will find the familiar categories from the past examples. First person, third person, top down and vehicle. Let's take the first person template as an example. After selecting it, you will be able to choose between a blueprint version and a C++ version. For now, we will focus on the blueprint approach. But don't worry, as promised, we will take a closer look at the C++ versions later. Once you choose blueprint, you will notice the new option for selecting a variant. This is where you can select one of the new templates which are built on top of the base project. For the first person template your options are none, arena shooter and survival horror. If you go with none, you will get the base version of the project. Just the essential player character, basic input setup and a simple test level. But if you pick one of the new variants, you will notice that an extra folder appears in the content browser. This contains all the assets, logic and maps specific to the variant. So from there you can open the variants map and jump right into it to test it out. Which brings us to the next part, how to actually learn 
Unreal Engine with these new templates. For that, I recommend four simple but powerful steps. Think of them as a ladder. Each step builds on the last and by the time you reach the top, you will not only understand how the systems work, but you will be confident building your own on top of them. Step 1. Start with the basic templates. Before diving into the fancy variants, take a moment to explore the base template which you can do by choosing the none option when creating a project. As mentioned before, these versions are clean and minimal, often just a character with basic controls and a blank level. This allows you to focus on the core concepts that you need to set up a very basic game in Unreal Engine. Each of the base versions already comes with a setup for various interactables like jump pads or interactive doors. Drag them into the scene and see how the player can interact with them. For example, you can open the basic first person template, move around and check how the player input is set up and linked to the actual gameplay. This will help you to understand what a minimal working setup looks like without extra features. Step 2. See how the variance extends the base project. Once you are comfortable with the base setup, it's time to look into one of the variants for the templates, so that you can explore how it builds on top of the foundations you have just looked at. Pay attention to the differences, whether it's new gameplay mechanics, UI elements or changes in the level design and compare them directly with the original version. If something catches your interest, just select it in the world outliner and open its blueprint to see exactly how it's implemented. Or if you find an interesting file in the content browser and want to see where it gets used, you can simply right click on it and open it in the reference viewer. Finally, to see where certain blueprint events are called, you can right click on them and search where they get referenced. This is especially helpful when figuring out where some of the UI events get called. Overall, this step is a great way to learn by taking apart real working systems. For example, at this stage you can download the arena shooter variant and you will quickly see that it builds on the basic template by introducing multiple weapons and using the jump pads and interactive doors. On top of that, it even includes a simple AI opponent setup. There is a lot you can dig into here. From how the weapon switching system works, to how health, damage and respawning are managed. And you can even take a closer look at how to set up a basic state tree that is used to drive the enemy behavior. That being said, the state tree is a great example of why I would not recommend jumping headfirst into every new feature just by looking at these new templates. Even though the setup in the arena shooter is relatively simple, it can still feel overwhelming if you are seeing it for the first time. A better approach is to start with the basics. Read through the official documentation or follow a beginner friendly tutorial to get a solid understanding of for example how a state tree in general works. Once you are familiar with the core concepts, come back to the template and explore how it's implemented in there. You will have a much easier time making sense of it and you will learn more effectively by combining theory with hands-on practice. Step 3. Adjust what's already there. Basically, try modifying these existing systems. This is where you start getting your hands dirty, take something from the variant and tweak it. Change values, replace assets or adjust the existing behavior. For example, you could open the horror template, find the stamina system and reduce the regeneration rate to make the sprint mechanic feel more tense. You could also tweak the lighting setting in the scene itself to change the mood of the level and observe how that impacts the atmosphere. Finally, the last step. Start adding your own features to the template. This is the point where your learning journey turns into creating something new. Take advantage of the existing structure and build on top of it by introducing your own mechanics and ideas. By now, you should have a solid idea of the different systems that are used inside the small minigames, which should make it much easier to expand and experiment confidently with those templates. For example, let's say you're working with the side scroller template. You could take it further by adding enemies that can actually attack the player. To make that happen, you might pull in an enemy AI from another template, like the arena shooter, but you 
you will still need to adapt it to fit the style of your current project. Next, why not give the player a weapon to fight back? This kind of experimentation gives you a real hands-on experience. Mixing systems from different templates, setting up basic AI behavior and creating your own combat mechanics. Of course, these are just starting points. Feel free to go wild with your own ideas. Because once you start building on top what these templates already give you, you are not just learning anymore. You are actually making your own little games. And with that, you have the four steps to learn Unreal Engine with these new templates. Step 1. Start with the basic templates. Step 2. See how the variance extends the basic templates. Step 3. Adjust what's already there. And Step 4. Add new things on top. And now, before we look into how you can use these templates to level up your C++ skills in Unreal Engine, if you enjoyed the video so far, consider subscribing to the channel and becoming a member. It's a huge help in keeping the content coming and supporting the growth of this awesome Unreal Engine community. Alright, with that out of the way, let's take a look at how these templates can help you to become a C++ king in Unreal Engine. As mentioned earlier, you can also select the C++ option when you create a project, but now you won't be able to select a specific variant. Instead, Unreal will generate the base template along with all the available variants in one project. That is why I recommend starting with the blueprint versions first. It allows you to explore each variant individually, helping you understand their unique features and systems one at a time. And once you are familiar with how everything fits together, transitioning to the C++ version becomes much easier. When it comes to exploring the C++ side of the templates, you have two approaches. The first is to dive directly into the C++ project itself. Here you will notice that the project structure is divided between the base setup and the additional variant folders. For example, in the first person template you will find a folder containing the base player character class. Perfect if you want to learn how to set up input or character controls in C++. Alongside that you will also see folders for the horror and arena shooter variants, each with their own C++ classes. This gives you a clear look at how those variants extend and build upon the base classes. And if you want to understand how the arena shooter AI works with a state tree in C++, you will find the setup in there. I know many of you wanted a C++ tutorial on state trees and this is a perfect place for you to start exploring it. Now the second approach is a bit more hybrid and honestly it's one of the most effective ways to bridge your blueprint knowledge into C++. Here is how it works. Start by opening the blueprint version of the project. For example, take the base first person project and navigate to first person, blueprints and BP first person character. This blueprint contains all the character movement logic set up using blueprint nodes. Now open the same project but in C++. You will still find the BP first person character in the exact same location. But this time you will notice that the blueprint contains less logic here because most of it lives in the C++ class it's based on. You can still see that the blueprint is used for assigning the input mapping context or setting up touch input, proving that using C++ plus doesn't mean ditching blueprints completely. In many cases, blueprint is simply more convenient for certain tasks. If you look at the top right corner of the blueprint editor, you will see its parent class. Click on it and it will open up the corresponding C++ file. Now you can compare this C++ class with the blueprint version from earlier. For instance, look at how input events like movement or aiming are handled in code versus blueprint. Let's take it a step further with the arena shooter variant. Open the BP shooter weapon pistol blueprint and you will notice that the logic is minimal. Its parent class is BP shooter weapon base which again doesn't hold much functionality either. Click on its parent class to reveal the C++ implementation where the actual weapon logic is defined. So basically the steps are to find the blueprint in the C++ project, tracing it to its parent class and comparing the code between blueprint and C++. This is in incredibly useful if you are aiming to transition from Blueprint to C++. You will quickly see how the same systems are structured in code with similar function names between Blueprint and C++ making the comparison even easier. I cannot stress this enough. 
This is one of the best learning tools if you want to truly understand how Blueprint functionality translates into C++. And the best part, the code in these templates is well structured and thoroughly commented. So you will rarely be left wondering what a particular line of code is actually doing. So not only do these templates give you modular gameplay ready systems out of the box, they also serve as a powerful resource for anyone looking to shift from visual scripting to C++ in Unreal Engine. But that was our small tour through the new Unreal Engine 5.6 templates and how you can use them to level up your Unreal Engine skills. These templates are more than just starting points. They are literally like playable tutorials that teach you by showing real finished mechanics. With that, check out this video if you want to know about 5 common beginner mistakes you might be doing in Unreal Engine.